Hey everybody, Libby Orch here, and I am backstage at the Exit Inn with songwriter artist Miss Kaylee Shore, and you just celebrated your first show of the Too Much to Say tour. Yeah. How is it? Um, it's crazy to even say that. It's my first ever headlining tour. Um, pretty wild. I mean, I've seen so many of my favorite artists play the stage, and I've always wanted to play Exit Inn. I think seeing my name on like the marquee, the letters, I was like, oh no. This is really happening. Um, it was magic. It was really, really great. You should be really proud. Your stage presence is phenomenal. You had the crowd so engaged the entire time. And let's talk about those covers. You covered uh, pretty much all of your idols. Elena yeah. Morissette, Nirvana, I mean, the whole nine yards. So talk about um, how that has influenced your craft and your performance. Yeah, absolutely. So I grew up, um, and I talked about this on stage, I sang Lithium by Nirvana. And um, I grew up playing in a Nirvana cover band uh, when I was 13. And then when I was 14, I played in a uh, bluegrass band. And I think that both of those things really led me to the sound I have now. And growing up, like the first two CDs I ever bought with my own money were um, the Dixie Chicks Fly and Pearl Jam yes. uh, Rear View Mirror. Um, and like, I feel like you can totally tell that by listening to my music. So we wanted to pay homage to a little bit of that. So we did My Chemical Romance and Alanis, who's um, Jagged Little Pill really was like the probably one of the biggest influences on Open Book as far as just transparency and sonics and just such a great album. Well, you've done such a great job of making all of this your own. And I want to talk about your new album, Open Book. Yeah. And the whole writing process of what that was like. And I've heard you say the honesty is just a huge deal to you. So what do you want people to hear through this album? And who are you speaking to? I mean, I think that we tend to as just a society, I skate over the truth so much because it's so much easier, you know, but then you get to a point when you have a year like I did where the ice starts cracking and you're like, Aah. and then you just have like, to do do? deal yeah. with it and, yeah. and swim around in it, whatever. And it's not pleasant, but I had to do it. And um, this album came from like a place of necessity. Like I was holding on to these like really commercial songs that were just about like parties or boys right. or whatever. And then life hit me like a Mack truck and I had to go back to the place of creation that like made me first start writing songs when I was a kid, which was sitting in my bedroom on my floor, writing like things like what was happening around me and making it rhyme to like make sense of it. And so that's very much so what open book was. And it feels like if you put it next to the songs I wrote in high school, I mean like obviously the songs are better because I was like <laughs> 13 and like really just angry and had no idea how to like funnel to a thought. Totally. Yeah. But like they, they really stand up next to that. And I think that it's such a testament to the like, learn the rules so you know how to break them in the end. Couldn't have said it better. You're one of the biggest faces in song suffragettes. And I want to know, um, how has that experience shaped your writing voice and deciding what you want to say to really empower, empower women, empower everyone that listens to your music? I think two of the most important um, pieces in my album, uh, like in making Open Book, were Savannah Kyes and Candy Carpenter, who are two of my closest who friends. Here tonight. They're here tonight, and they also wrote um, some really like crucial songs on the album for me. Um, I wrote the one with Savannah Kyes um, the day after I went through this um, breakup after a six-year relationship. It was like not pretty, yeah. and um, I had a write schedule with her. My producer Skip Black, and I was like, I could cancel this, and everyone would understand. Um, I was like, or I could just go and just tell them what had happened and do my favorite thing, which is writing songs. And so we did that, and it was, like, such an emotional day because I would literally, like, ended this relationship 10 hours before we wrote. And um, we wrote that song, and it was so – it was such a release for me, and, like, it just really reassured me that, like, writing is, like, 100% my favorite thing on the planet because even in that dark of a time, it's what I want to do. Um, so that was a really crucial moment for the album. And then with Candy Carpenter, I wrote some of, like, the most honest songs I've ever written in my life, which are F.E. Forever, Gatsby, and um, Escape especially those three um it's like stuff that's uncomfortable to admit but when you put it in the universe like I hear from women on Effie Forever like from like 13 year old girls posting a TikTok with their middle finger up <laughs> to their like middle school boyfriend who was like an absolute like a hat to them or a woman who's like 50 and she's like I'm divorced and I just I put that ring on my middle finger and I'm like yes sister it's timeless like, it's timeless and you know what so are a hats Oh, I'm trying to be more 100%. Curious, Anybody that has a TikTok covered. out there, that is the song that you need to be covering. So, um, my last question is this is a crossover album, and so you've got a little bit of country inspiration, a little bit of pop inspiration, rock. Was there, um, did you have a specific idea for what songs you wanted to be more country forward rather than others that were more pop forward, or did you just kind of go with what? 
It kind of, I feel like so much of it was just like the melodic sensibilities um, yeah. that have made people think it's like pop. I mean, because we didn't use any electronic instruments. Everything is raw, real. I played a lot of the guitars on the album, mm -hmm. um, but everything's an organic instrument. And we did put like a traditional country instrument on every single song, whether it's a dobro or a banjo or a pedal steel or a fiddle. It's on every part of the album. So if you really go and listen to it, like it's not a bunch of, bunch of synthesizers making it sound like pop. It's just like the melodies. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I think everything's very anchored to country. Um, so any of that was like very just much so what happened in the writing room and sort of flowed over into the production. You've got a couple other tour dates coming up. Um, how excited are you to continue on? I'm so excited. I mean, after tonight, like I was like very nervous, but like in a fun way, you know, like there's nervous in a like yeah. way and there's nervous in a like. You're just anxious to get yeah, out yeah, there. Totally. And then you, you dance it all out, which everyone I here really witnessed. I really did. I really did. I don't know if I've ever, I don't think I've ever performed like that hard in my life. Like, I need a nap now, but I'm not going to take one. I'm going to go drink more tequila, yeah. but then I'm going to celebrate. I am going to sleep it tomorrow. But um, this show has me so excited for the rest of the tour. My band, they are some of the best people I know. And, like, being able to look to my left or my right and see that they're having as much fun as I am is, like, really just what keeps it going and, and playing off that energy. So I literally, I know this sounds so just like something everybody said before, but I could not possibly be more excited <laughs> for the rest of the tour. You should be. And um, really quickly, so this is a crossover album, and if you had to choose two different performers, one from pop, one from country, or rock, or yeah. whatever, um, to cover one of your songs from your new album, who would it be? Okay, um, I mean, I have, like, a vision board where I have, like, all my, like, loftiest goals on them, and doing a CMT Crossroads with Alanis Morissette is, like, number one on that list. Um, but I would, pr so I'd probably pick Alanis. Okay. Um, I'd probably have her do... Too much to say, I think, with the harmonica. She would kill oh it, I think. That harmonica, man, <laughs> is like, it's fire. Thank you. And then I'd probably have um, Miranda Lambert do Gatsby, because Kerosene, that album, influenced my like open book probably just as equally as Jagged Little Pill. I listened so. to that nonstop in high school. So yeah, I was so mad, and I finally found songs that were as mad as I was, She's and I was like, yeah! Yeah, no, Miranda's amazing. <laughs> well, you were awesome. Thank you.